Right, you too. It's Shadow King King Azu, and I'm here with my review of Dragon Ball Super Episode 84. So we start off with Goku and Gohan uh, going flying off to recruit Krillin in Android 18. Uh, and meanwhile, Krillin's off doing police work, and he's doing the usual work of uh, catching robbers and generic superhero stuff like. Uh, catch kittens, uh, walk the elderly, that sort of, that sort of thing. And, uh, Go, and Goku and Gohan finally meet up with Krillin. While he's, uh, well, he just caught some robbers with, with his crop, with his cop buddies. Which also technically means that they just entered a crime scene. Well, luckily they're good friends with Krillin, so he probably won't, uh, press charges. So uh, they they mentioned the uh, tournament of power and uh, basically what the rules are about it. And Krillin does feel optimistic about the whole battle royale thing, where she's going to be involved a team aspect to it, and it won't be all about power despite its name. And uh, he's excited about the no killing rule, so he won't be killed again. Uh, but he still had still skeptical if he should uh, go. However, his good old wife Android eighteen urges him to participate because she just says that he has all those uh, training equipment. If you don't pra if you don't put the physical use, what's good? I mean, what's the whole point of it? I would have mentioned a sex joke, but Masako X kind of beat me to the punch, so we'll just skip that. So, Krillin ultimately agrees to uh, participate. Uh, then, uh, Goku tries to recruit Android 18, but she doesn't want to because, uh, for one, uh, there'd be no one to take care of Marin if she went to the multiversal tournament. And two, she doesn't like fighting for free. So, Goku uh, lies and says that uh, each uh, fighter will get $10 million if they win. I mean, not $10 million, $10 million zenny. Sorry, it's good there. Yeah, so $10 million zenny is for, for every fighter if the team wins. So this is, has to be like the second time Goku's lied. The only other time I can remember was when back in the Boo Saga when, uh, when he lied to the Elder Kai about if he helps... Uh, helps... Gohan unlock his potential to fight Super Boo, he would uh, give a photo of Boma. Mm. It's always so uncomfortable seeing Goku lie. So I'm usually used to him being a decent person and pure of heart. I mean, relatively speaking, with the whole, you know, get, being obsessed with fighting and that leading to. Also questionable actions, but whatever. So, Android 18, while being skeptical about things, it does ultimately agree. Uh, because she does like that money. Now, that still always brings up the question of, if these, got, if these characters want money, why don't they just ask Boma or Mr. Sane for some? Hell, has Mr. Sane even paid Android 18 to eat... The ten million zenny or whatever he she he owed him. I mean, oh, he owed her. I mean, back in the Boo Saga. And no, I'm not counting that stupid Broly. I mean, that Broly movie because that's non-canon and it's so asinine. But anyway, all both Android 18 and Krillin agreed to play, participate in the Tournament of Power. However, Gohan's still skeptical of Krillin's abilities and wishes to spar with him to see how well he would do. And Krillin says that he doesn't feel offended by this and wants to <coughs> is willing to give him a sh uh, to show him what he's made of. Goku, thanks to that, uh, don't want to say filler because the because the episode that's actually canon is kind of. Uh, referencing this so uh we'll say like at the 
in between build up episodes uh, where we had that force of illusions and Krillin gained some self confidence and a little bit of a power boost. Uh, it does allow him to keep up with Gohan. Not sure if he went mystic form, but though I kind of doubt it. And we have, as we see through the fight, Gohan is obviously more powerful than Krillin, but Krillin's able to best him thanks to his uh, technique and experience and strategy. And he also developed a new technique called the Taioken Times 100, or the Solar Flare Times 100, if you follow the English dub. Uh, which is not only blinds the, pl the opponent like the normal Solar Flare, but also uh, dulls their sensing ability, so they can't even detect him with their key. And uh, Krillin manages to uh, knock Gohan out of bounds of the uh, of the cliff plateau. I, I don't know my land masses. And Gohan loses the fight. Did you guys hear that? I think that's the sound of a bunch of Gohan fanboys screaming out in anger. What a lovely sound. Just bask in it for a moment. Ah, bliss. <laughs> but anyway, Gohan then apologizes for having underestimated Gohan. I mean, not Gohan, Krillin. And, uh, yeah, he feels d deeply regretted about it. But Krillin says that it's all right, and that together with his strategies and Gohan's power, uh, they'll really... Uh, rock this tournament. However, Goku wants to also wants to fight Krillin, and uh, see how just wants to see how he's gonna do against, against like more powerful opponents. So they fight on top of the uh, Mr. Satan building because, of course, Mr. Satan would have a building based on himself. And they said that they could basically go all out on the top of this building. Yeah, Goku, I think if you went all out, there wouldn't be a be a universe. Much much less a, a building. But they start. But they can start their fight. Though Android 18 is a little worried because Krillin just got back from his fight with Gohan, and that Tayo, uh the Solar Flare Tons 100. Uh, this apparently takes a lot out of him, so he won't be using that a whole lot in the tournament, which means that it's going to have to be more strategically used, and he'll have to find the right moment to use that technique. But back to the fight, we see that Krillin does able to uh, keep Goku on his toes, and he has to dodge a lot of his attacks, and he does find innovative ways to uh, use his normal techniques like the uh, Kienzan or the Destructive Disc and uh, is able to actually guide it. So, kind of like how Frieza did it, except I don't think he lost the cutting edge of the, uh, of the techniques. So, it's still as deadly as it normally is. But Goku it wasn't hit by any of the techniques. Uh, however, Krillin does try to do, do the hand position for the solar flare, but it's actually a, a misdirect, and he fires off an energy blast at Goku, but he, Goku obviously stru shrugs it off, and goes Super Saiyan, but then decides to go do Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan, and Krillin, even though he's haven't seen this, he feels the whole pressure of the God Key, and feels just how severely outclassed he is by that power. So we, it's basically was become like as Goku wanted it to be, a battle of strategy versus uh, immense power, and of course immense power wins because no amount of strategy is going to uh, help you out when someone is so far out of your league. And uh, despite this. Krillin tries to fire his uh, Kamehameha against Goku's god Kamehameha. And it 
holds off for a little bit, but ultimately the inevitable happens. Except for the fact that Android 18 manages to kick the the clashing beams out of the way. Okay, yeah. Even if Goku was heavily suppressing his power, which I'm which we obviously he was, otherwise he would have destroyed Krillin a long time ago. I call bullshit that Android 18 would be able to kick two colliding Kamiyamihas, one of them empowered by God Key. Heavily repressed God Key, but still. I I'm pretty sure she would have at least been severely injured from the colliding hot uh, energy beams. Uh, but still, we get to this night touching moment where Android 18 reminds Krillin that this isn't a one on one fight and that the Tormentor Power is a battle royale so they could actually team up against uh, their opponents. And reminds Goku that there's no killing, this is a no killing tournament, so they have to follow the rules and uh, fight, fight, according to the, uh, fight accordingly. And they prepare to double team on Goku, but Goku calls off the fight because uh, he thinks they've done pretty well. And he also thanks him because uh, they reminded him uh, that this is a team battle. And had Goku gone in like he, like he, as he is, he probably won't do as successfully as he expects to, in the in the most versatile tournament. Not because he's not powerful, but because there's a lot of teams that are going to be working together, and they have all different techniques and strategies that might overcome Goku. Uh, so yeah, we did get a nice bit of Goku getting some character development, thinking about how this tournament is going to work. And with the fight called off, uh, Goku asks where Android 17 is, and Android 18 basically tells him that he, uh, he's become a park ranger ever since the Boo saga. Uh, but uh, she doesn't know exact, exactly where he is. And uh, Quillen says that the gods always watch over everything, so try asking Dende. I mean, well, Goku suggests asking Dende. Quillen just has to try talking to a god since they watch everything. And we get to see shots of uh, of Android 17, uh, Piccolo meditating, and the tournament of uh, power still being prepared. So all in all, this was a really great episode. We got some... Uh, Character development between Android 18, uh, Goku, and Krillin, as Android 18 is showing that she's that does care more about her husband, uh, despite people's claim that she doesn't and just tolerates him, which is complete BS. Thank you, Drag. Thank you, Dragon Ball Super. Uh, Krillin has developed himself to be a great fighter ever since that in between build up episode, and as uh, developed his skills and experience. And Goku is starting to consider more about the tor tournament and has to develop strategies around this whole team. And will make him a much better fighter in this uh, whole tournament. And it's nice to see Goku actually think about things. So all in all, really great episode. Really enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to the next episode. I'll catch you guys later.